Is there anyone who is small or maybe small in spirit who would like an Easter egg? Anybody want an Easter egg? Come and get an egg, but remember, there's a catch. You have to answer a question first. Oh, a whole bunch of people coming down from the balcony, too. Wait till I get a good audience up here first. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Now you got to answer a question first. You got to do your work before you get your reward. A few more people coming. My question for you is, why do you think we color Easter eggs? Why do we dye them or paint them? Yes, sir. Do you remember God's birthday? Well, it's close. It's kind of God's birthday. Something new happens today. Yes, sir. Could be partly for the rainbow in the sky. Yeah, but um, when Mo Noah comes out of the ark. Yes, sir. Definitely to celebrate Easter. What else is, what's the, when you look at these eggs, what, what do you see? What's different about them? Yes, sir. Exactly. Thank you. I didn't even pay you to say that. Every single egg is different. What it's saying is God loves each one of us just exactly as we are. And the promises God makes today are promises for every one of us. No matter what we look like, no matter what we're shaped like, when the eggs come out of the carton, they all look exactly the same. But once they're painted, those colors come out, and we can take those colors with us out into the world. Yes, sir. Um, can you take the egg? Yes, now you can take an egg. <laughs> easy, easy, <laughs> slow, slow. Don't break up, please. <laughs> it's like Thanksgiving at Walmart. <laughs> It does, yes. Here. Maybe you can trade later. If you make him a good offer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> sure. Thank you all very much. For those who are too shy or too big, the rest will be in the back at the end. Please take them away. Now just a few words for the grown-ups. and cleaned houses because the embassy owned all the houses that people lived in. And I worked with three Somali women, Aisha, Fatima, and Khadija. And because I was going to work with them all summer, they couldn't just say, hey, you. They had to know my name. And so I tried to tell them my name, but if, for those who speak another language, you'll know certain things don't translate very well, and some of the sounds in English don't work well in other languages. So how will... My first name just didn't work for them, but instead they called me Hawa, which turns out is a name in Somali. Uh, amusingly, it's a woman's name, and they thought this was hilarious. <laughs> they made a point of calling me by my name just as often as they could and laughing every time they did it. Luckily, I had a good sense of humor for a 15-year-old, and it worked pretty well. I got to know them. I, I was part of their tribe. By, by the fact that they knew my name, they called me a name, it made me part of their group. I wasn't just foreign boy. Because, of course, I was the foreigner there, wasn't I? Somehow having a name that they could call me, having a name that I knew, made me someone more dignified. There's a cartoon in The New Yorker sometime last year that shows this monster walking across the stage at graduation wearing a mortarboard and holding a diploma. He's thinking to himself, Dr. Jekyll and Dr. Hyde. 
somehow the, 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 the name, the change of his name has given him some dignity that's important to him. There's more to it than just that, of course. There's also the idea of really, truly being in a relationship. We hear in, elsewhere in the Gospel of John that the Good Shepherd calls every sheep by name. It's about having a relationship with the shepherd, not just being one of the flock, not just being a face in the crowd, but being someone who is known. You may know that in the Christian denomination called the Christian and Missionary Alliance, they have an absolute policy that when a church gets to a certain size, it has to split into two congregations. Someone has to go somewhere else and start a new church because it's their feeling that when the church gets so large that everybody in it can't know everybody else's name, they can no longer really truly be a Christian community. But there's something about that, the idea that we're all together in it and are named in a way that's really, really important. Clearly, that's part of what is happening in the story we hear in the gospel this morning when Jesus calls Mary by name. It's only when, she calls, when he calls her by her name that she really recognizes him and knows who he is. It really personalizes the story. It's not just, well, okay, here's the news, go spread it on. It, it, right now, you, Mary, I'm talking to you. Can you imagine, just for a moment, dear friends, what it would be like to be called by name by the risen Christ? First of all, to be so surprised by the event and everything that's happened, but then to have it made about you. That, dear friends, is what each of us should be hoping for today. In some way, God is calling each one of us by name. And it is our joy to know that if, in fact, it happened for one of the followers of Jesus, it will happen for all the rest, including you and even me. Think about the people who were in this story. There, there's, there's Mary, there's Peter, there's Thomas for the sake of St. Thomas's church. Uh, each of them is called by name at some point in what follows in the story, but with different sorts of reasons. Mary is called by name as a way of saying, you've been with me, you stuck with me. I know who you are. All is not lost. Peter is later called by name to say, well, you betrayed me. You turned your back on me after you said you wouldn't, but there's still more of the story there too. I have something else for you to do. You have no idea yet what you're getting into, but I have something else for you to do. Thomas, who refuses to believe, finally sees the proof and goes on also to do other things. All three of them are still who they were before, but they also become new people. Somehow they become Easter people, people who have been called by name by the risen Christ and who go on to do things they could never have imagined. This is the day for things that we could never have imagined. What can God not accomplish if God has triumphed over death? The world threw the best it had at God and God said that's not enough. Even that will not stop the plans, the purposes the power of God. St. John Chrysostom in his Easter sermon says, let no one mourn having fallen again and again and again, for today forgiveness is risen from the dead. Take out fallen again and again and stick in anything else you like. Let no one today fear scarcity, for abundance has risen from the grave. Let no one fear discouragement today, for the source of all inspiration has risen from the grave. Let no one fear the indifference of the world, because today zeal has risen from the grave. We, dear friends, have been called by name. What can God not accomplish in each one of us? Our names have been spoken, dear friends. Each one of us has been awakened in a way that, the way, same way that Mary was. Each one of us is being sent into the world as an Easter person. 
having been named after the resurrection, given something important to do. Let no one doubt that. Also, let no one doubt that for the most part, we have no idea what that thing will be yet. It's in the mind of, heart, mind of God. It's in the heart of God. It has yet to be revealed. For today, it is enough simply to be amazed at what God has done. Simply enough to join the throng in saying, Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.